Well, tough words from the US president today, but it doesn't seem like a red line has been crossed for them, certainly not yet. Can we say the same for the UK? With me in the studio tonight, the Israeli author, Herman Masik, uh, and also the journalist, Owen Jones. Um, Herman, let me start with you. Um, how much pressure do you think Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be feeling tonight? I think he's feeling a lot of pressure, not only from um, the states, but also from within Israel. There are many voices of Israeli civilians that just don't want this war and want it to end. But most importantly, we want 134 innocent Israeli hostages, and many of them are being raped in captivity right now. We want them to be released out of hell. We have testimonies of rape victims speaking about the horrific, horrific conditions that they are being held in. Um, we need to do everything we can to bring them home. I would hope that every government would do everything they can to bring those citizens home. I'm sure that th they would. But, I mean, right now, the US president is saying there's got to be a ceasefire. There's a ratcheting of, of rhetoric from the UK. I mean, at some point, is Netanyahu going to have to give in to this? I think that he would have to. I think that there's a lot of pressure and he would have to do something different. Um, I know that the war um, is not something that Israelis want. I just came back from Israel uh, the other day and my family are all shattered. Israelis are not in a good place. They want this war to over, uh, to be over. And I think that's what we are focusing on right, right now to try and finish it. But the truth is that Israel has been giving over and over again um, suggestions for a ceasefire agreement, for um, uh, negotiating with Hamas and trying to achieve a deal to to, uh, to release the hostages, but Hamas is saying no, because all of this is exactly what Hamas wants. There are two wars here. There's a war in the battlefield and there's a PR war. And the PR war is playing perfectly for Hamas that is not distinguishing between civilians and, and terrorists when they say that 32,000 people are, are dead. We know that majority of them are, I mean, at least 13,000 of them are uh, uh, Hamas terrorists and they don't report them. Sorry, let me just... Can, can I just... Well, no, yeah, um, yeah, Bot. Can I just say... A lot we of things are charged for you we don't know that. We don't know that 13,000 of those people are Hamas terrorists. No, no, can I just actually just no. correct that? Oh, I, my I, God, bring you in a moment, uh, um, But I think we've got, to, we've got to be clear about that. Owen, I will come to you right now. I can, I can sense your exasperation when you were looking at Joe... Uh, at, uh, Mark talking about Joe Biden's comments and, and, and there. Well, to be, to be clear, uh, Israel has said 9,000 so-called terrorists have been killed. But as the Israeli newspaper Haaretz pointed out, they include those who cross into a kill zone with an invisible line including many civilians, and when they cross, they are then posthumously termed terrorists with no evidence whatsoever. 40,000 Palestinians are likely to have been killed or more in Gaza because the official statistics exclude those buried under the rubble. Now, the point about Joe Biden and his position there, Joe Biden's hot air all the way through has been a defining feature of this conflict, so-called conflict, genocide and slaughter against the people of Gaza. Um, he has armed and backed Israel as it has caused so much destruction, the vast majority... The, sorry, a large majority of Gaza's civilian infrastructure is now severely damaged or destroyed, so Gaza is now a different colour and texture when looked at from space, uh, where yeah. around 13,000-plus children have died violent, horrible deaths, either with their buildings coming down on top of them or being burned and cooked slowly to death or suffocated or both at the same time. Um, and that point, which I did think was editorialising on, on, on the part of your journalist, was that it was beyond any doubt or any reason that, you know, it was completely unthinkable that the US could pull the plug on arms because that would then pose an existential threat to Israel. That's in Israel's court. Israel has decided to starve the people of Gaza, the fastest drop in the nutritional status of a population in recorded history, the most severe famine since World War II now beckons, you have people in the north at the moment who are starving to death and eating animal feed in order to live. As David Cameron, Foreign Secretary, not, not someone I naturally normally quote, detailed in a letter which led, I would, uh, I would note, to the sacking of the Israeli spokesperson Elon Levy, which is probably why you don't have him on your news channel anymore, is because Elon Levy made false statements about aid trucks being allowed in, which then David Cameron went through and said that wasn't true. Israel had gone to great lengths to stop them coming in. The point I'm making is, Israel, all the way through this, has been raising civilian infrastructure to the ground. It has conducted the biggest killing of aid workers in recorded history. And the point I would make, and this is why I think there's a bit of journalistic malpractice which has defined this conflict, Israeli leaders and officials were very clear from the very beginning about what they were going to do. They didn't hide it. You don't have to go mm. through leaked documents. You just have to listen to, for example, 
to Yov Gallant, the Defence Minister, who's in the War Cabinet of Three, who said, two days after the atrocities committed by Hamas on the 7th of October, um, that, uh, that they were going to cut off food, water and all the essentials of life on the grounds they were fighting human animals. And then, on the 9th of October, he declared he was lifting all restraints on soldiers and, a day later, he said he was lifting all restrictions on Israeli soldiers. We've now seen that and the impunity that Israel enjoys from the West has led to aid workers who shared their coordinates on a pre-approved route with massive World Central Kitchen logos who were chased from car to car with the drone until every single one was dead. Well, and I'll tell you this, if that's true with those aid workers, Palestinians, ordinary Palestinians, did not, don't have a chance. <laughs> And Joe Biden has sat through well, all of this, wringing his hand occasionally whilst ensuring uh, Israel has the answer. Let, me, to let me give you a chance to respond. I'm interested in that there's, there's a lot that, that I'm sure some of the phraseology you won't agree with. But no, quite a lot of, of the is, facts as well. But, but some facts. of this is facts, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Gaza is uh, being are, absolutely. Are there no right. trucks going into Gaza? Is that what you're saying? There are no no, there's no trucks with humanitarian aid. You're saying that 7 million tons of food today did not enter Gaza. Israel is lying can, about that. I can that. answer that question very clearly. Um, Israel has destroyed much of Gaza's domestic food production and agriculture, yeah. the amount of food aid, as David Cameron has noted, is much less than before the 7th of October, when the need is much greater. And not only that, the roads have been trashed, OK, for a start. Police officers, which guard those trucks, have been deliberately targeted by Israel, with Joe Biden's own administration condemning Benjamin Netanyahu uh, for doing that. Whether it comes to the infrastructure, get, or, for example, the, the ability to transport in, uh, uh, the, the aid around is impossible now. Right. So I mean, th I mean, this I mean, is I mean, why the, the destruction a... of agriculture I mean, plus the, the inability to I mean, get I mean, the food in. Yeah. You, you throw um, a lot of hand no, and, and, and you know what, I, I do understand why this conflict raises a lot of emotions. I think we need to focus on reality. Uh, and I understand, especially when you are Jewish or Palestinian or Arab, why you feel so, so connected to this conflict uh, and, and really being hurt and upset. I'm upset. My family, my friends, I lost friends in October 7th. Um, I don't understand why you are so uh, Because I object to genocide, that, because I'm a human being. And of course, it's not a genocide because I'm a human being. That's why. Would you call every war a genocide? Or, or so no, why is no, it I genocide? Because you're seeing the deliberate attempt to starve a population to death, which Israel's own leaders said I, at the I, beginning. I, they I, were think, I think we, we, let's, let's Israel is now on trial wait, at the International Court of Justice. And genocide. what did they say? Did they, did they say it's a genocide? The the then, so do you know how the just quickly on that? Well, they can't do that at this stage. Right, they, so they, they can't do it. No, no, no. So why do yeah. you bring no, it up? Because, because, because that's what you do. Because that's they what said, you've done this whole time. Because they said oh, it was plausible. Really pieces of Fine. ideas that are, said it was, that are false. They said it was a plausible out. case. You so make a plausible case. Court of justice, you can both win that argument, all right? Okay. Both of you can win on the international court. Right. No, they haven't said it's a genocide. Yes, they, they have said it's a genocide. They can't say it's a genocide yet. Just to get the facts about that. But you can say it's a genocide. The International Court of Justice can't You can say it's a genocide. They can legally determine something, but I can look at the A British guy in London would tell us it's a genocide in Gaza. I want to address this question. Mm. Let's get away from the generalisation. Let's talk specifically about what happened with these aid workers who were killed on the ground. Yeah. Now, it, it's a point that Mark Stone made. It's a point that I know you, you have referred to it and, and said it's, it's revolting. But is it a reality that foreign aid workers present a much greater international challenge to the Israeli government than the deaths of tens of thousands of Palestinians? Absolutely not. I think that every civilian casualty is terrible, and that's what Israel has been saying for since the beginning of this war. Um, I don't think that anyone in Israel, you know, the difference between Hamas and Israel is that when civilians are killed in Gaza, Israelis are not going in the streets and celebrating it. We're not handing out sweets in the streets. No, but they seem Israel. a lot more bothered about the international reaction to these aid workers than they do about the, the continual death of Palestinian civilians. I, I don't think so. I think that the, that the reason that it was so. Uh, um, uh, condemned and, and so important for Israel to come out and condemn it is because it was a targeted attack. It wasn't collateral damage. It was a targeted attack and Israel came out before the U.S. even woke up. It was in the night in the, U in the U.S. and Israel came out and said, this is a mistake. We've made a mistake. We're going to improve ourselves. We're going to try to, make, to do better in the future when we're fighting a war against an organization that is hiding itself among civilian population, building tunnels and shelters okay. underground, and then putting the civilians above ground, hoping that Israel would attack just, those just civilians, stop. and then having people in the I'll West... In uh, having people in the West going on to channels and defending them. That's the issue here. And so there's one, his, there's one country... Let me them. just finish. The, one one well, we'll come to you. Uh, just, there's one country that has built shelters, bomb shelters, invested billions of dollars in defense system in protecting its civilians. 
and there's a terrorist organization that has done everything it can, building a channel of, of uh, tunnels underground in Gaza that is like the London Underground to hide, not civilians, to hide hostages, Israeli hostages and Hamas terrorists and ammunition. That's the problem here. And that's, uh, I can't believe that we haven't seen this clearly. Owen, I, I want to ask a question, actually, the both of you. Well, I'd like to, oh, do I get to answer any of that? Or? Uh, I, I'd like to move on. Lots of Which is this, Owen? I don't think we can just have misinformation on national television that isn't corrected. What are you saying is misinformation now? Uh, well, I mean, first he accused me of defending Hamas, uh, which I have to say, those smears might have worked once, but it just people okay. watching this think you're desperate. The point about human shields, a brilliant piece of investigative journalism in Plus 972 magazine by the brilliant Israeli journalist Yuval Abraham revealed the use of artificial intelligence, a system called Lavender, and what that does is generate a whole load of low-level operatives generated by artificial intelligence uh, with a collateral damage level per person of those targets of up to 20 civilians. The idea, which, which we have to say, the IDF has said that it uses this for information right. purposes that it has not used. Okay, well, okay, well, well, six separate intelligence sources briefed this brilliant investigative Israeli journalist. Now you can see what's happened there. There's, what they do, according to this information, is they wait for those operatives to go home, when they're in bed, with their families there, and they blow them up, and they blow up their kids, and they blow up their families. Can you imagine Hamas? was going around blowing up soldiers, Israeli soldiers, in their homes with they their children. They literally did that. Now, this is, this is, well, well, and, and you, think that's, you think that's unacceptable? Okay. I do. The question but Israel I is doing that as state you sanctions. Said that. The question I've said you're they've committed... That. Let's, let's have a reasonable... Like, you watched the atrocities and you challenged their authenticity. I, said, no, it I want to ask you no, both a question, which I is didn't this. Do that. If Hamas were to release the hostages tomorrow, mm. what happens then? Uh, look at the West Bank. Look at the number of people who have been slaughtered in the West Bank since this began. Last year alone, before the 7th of October, 240 Palestinian civilians, 40 of them children, were killed in the West Bank. And we were told that was a ceasefire. In the West Bank now, people have been driven from their homes and they're being slaughtered. The West Bank is not run by Hamas, it's run by Fatah, who put down their arms and accepted a peace process. What we're seeing in Gaza already, this idea of releasing the hostages, which I want. Taking those hostages was a severe war crime, a grave and unacceptable war crime. And the only way hostages have been released in any significant number is through ceasefire and prisoner swaps. That includes those prisoners who have been need to be released. And again, the information that's come out today of the treatment of these prisoners who are held without charge, with their yeah. handcuffed so much that they've been amputated, it as well as the work by Save the Children, which is detailed how child detainees are sexually and physically abused. Oh, and now, it's talk... very important can, I, I, that, we, I, that we talk about this. I want to give you to get a, a chance. Yeah. Same question. If the if the hostages were released, what do you think would happen? I mean, the amount of passion that you have for Palestinian prisoners, but not for the Israelis, and and this, no. And, I just and called. Like, I, I said it was a war crime. crime. A great yeah. war. I said it, it was, was a severe war, war crime, crime. But they did not dis describe in specific what the Israeli hostages are, being, are going through for six months. Well, now. I'm asking you. Know, and that's if and they I know. Released, and, and I just want to. Happen? I just want to point it out because it's important. Because oh. we're uh, we're seeing this uh, campaign by yourself and others that are pushing those um, uh, details that are not even true. Uh, that are widely contested by uh, every uh, news media and, and, and intelligence uh, agency no, in the don't. world. Um, and, 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 you know, if, the, if, if you want to know what would happen if the hostages would be released, go back to October 6. The, the reason that the hostages are there is because Hamas went into Israel, committed one of the worst massacres against Israeli civilians, and took innocents from their beds, from their beds, babies. There's a baby in Gaza that Owen did not mention here. And that's the issue. I haven't mentioned every war. I said it was a war, so, severe okay. war crime. I, the difference between me and you no, is no, I condemn all war point, crimes. That's gentlemen, the I'm going to cause a... But there's much more I'm, than I'm that different between us. Uh, request a well, pause I at this agree. point. Yeah. Take our breath, uh, and uh, we will come back to this topic later on. But you are watching the world with me, Adam Parsons.